Today we continue to listen Kamichanda Nivarana, Sense Desire. Sense Desire means the desire for sensual objects, desire, attachment, craving, longing, lust, all our sense desire. It means the desire for visible objects, desire for audible objects, desire for smells, desire for odors, desire for taste, desire for tangible and mental objects. Desire for anything is called sense desire. When sense desire is present in practitioner, they know there is sense desire in me. So during meditation, when we have thoughts of desire, thoughts of lust or thoughts of craving, thoughts of attachment, then we should be aware of the presence of sense desire in us. And we will know that there is sense desire present in me. We must use a mentally note desire, 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 or attachment, 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 or craving, craving, craving. At the moment of observing them, at the moment of observing the mental hindrances, they are already gone. And there are causes of arising of good thoughts or of bad thoughts. Generally speaking, there is there are two kinds of what we call reflection. We call them attitudes of viewing. They are Ayoniso Manasikara, unwise reflection, and Yoniso Manasikara, wise reflection. Unwise reflection leads to Akusala thoughts. Unwholesome thoughts and wise reflection lead to kusala thoughts or wholesome thoughts. Ayon nisam manasikara, unwise reflection. What that means? Unwise reflection means in experience reflection. Reflection on the wrong track. So we call them wrong reflection. So when we practice vipassana meditation, we have to perceive namarupa or psychophysical phenomena occurring at the six and those as they really are. Namaruba or psychophysical phenomena are impermanent, unsatisfactory, 
and the soulless to have a soul, soulless anatta, anicca dukkha anatta, So there are kinds of reflection that you take the impermanent to be permanent, you take the unsatisfactory to be satisfactory, you take the soulless to have a soul, you take the ugly to be beautiful. And then there comes Ayoni Somanasikara. So when you take things to be permanent, satisfactory, substantial, beautiful, in Bali, when you take Namarupa to be nature, Sukha, Atta, and Suva, and you take something to be attached to, then you have this kinds of Ayoni Samanasikara, unwise reflection. These reflections are unwise because they cause akusala thoughts, they cause unwholesome thoughts to arise. So unwise reflections are the general cause of the arising of unwholesome thoughts. And reflection of the opposite kinds are yoniso manasikara, wise reflection. They are experience, reflection, reflection that are on the right track. All Namarupa or all psychophysical phenomena occurring at the six and those are impermanent, suffering, unsatisfactory, and no soul. And they are the kinds of reflection that you take the impermanent, you take the Namarupa. The impermanent to be impermanent. You take the unsatisfactory to be unsatisfactory. You take the soullessness to be without soul. You take the ugly not to be beautiful. And you take the undesirable to be undesirable. There is the correct way of viewing things. And then Buddha said that everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory, and insubstantial. So you are not to be attached to anything. When you see things, when you see Namarupa in this way, you are said to have this kinds of wise reflection. That is a right and correct reflection or view of Namarupa. Says desire arises in you because you have unwise reflection. There are objects that are conditions for sensuality, condition for sense desire to arise. You see things that you consider to be beautiful. You see things that you think are desirable, and then you develop a kinds of attachment to all these things and experience a sort of craving. This craving or attachment arises because you have a wrong attitude. 
you reflect incorrectly on this namarupa, on this psychophysical phenomena. So when sense desire arises in meditators, they may notice that the desire arises in them because they are reflecting unwisely. They have viewed the objects of sensual desire in a wrong way, in a way that made them think they are lasting, they are satisfying, they are substantial, and they are beautiful. In meditation, you can notice this and become aware of it. Oh, because I have unwise reflections, this sense desire arises in me. <coughs> so one of the methods to overcome the attachment or sensual desire is to reflect on the repulsiveness of the body. Asupa. Or to contemplate the causality and impermanence of conditioned phenomena. That is the true nature of Sankara, true nature of Namarupa. That is reflection method. And what's the best method? The best and simplest method among others is to develop mindfulness. By noting the attachment or desire as long as it passes, as long as it's going on. Normally it disappears after a while when noted concurrently and carefully even if it does not disappear immediately, yogi will be safe under the protection of mindfulness in the abode of noble ones, Ariyawasa. So last few weeks, the story of Venerabhadesa If Venerabhadesa had passed away with mindfulness, he could have been reborn as a deity in a blissful realm because of his virtue, sila, but not as a loss. However, unfortunately, Venerable Desa failed to be mindful of the attachment. So he dwelled in the house of common people, Pudujana, which was exposed to the danger of woeful states. So immediately after death, Venerable Desa was reborn as a love big loss. So in this case, we need to ponder this point deeply. It was a single rope, something humble that among Tesa in the story got attached to. Yet he got attached to it so strongly that he could not let go of it. What the result? The result is he was to be re reborn as a loss on the rope. So we need to consider how many desirable objects we have possessed and get attached to. 
and whether we are sure that we can let go of them all when the time of death comes to us. If we are sure we can, then we will be the winners. Otherwise, we must be prepared ahead of time to build the abodes of noble ones. Because Ariyawasa, the noble, uh, the, the abodes of noble ones is safe. Just as money is necessary to build a circular house, so also sadda, faith in the practice is necessary to build the abode of noble ones. Ariyawasa. In Bali, Ariyawasa is the abode of noble ones that dwelling, that abode is well guarded from the dangers of torturous cycle of four woeful states and all suffering. If you stay there, if you stay in Ariyawasa, you can overcome sorrow, lamentation, and there will not, uh, there will despair, pain, and grief in you. Very safe, Ariyawasa. So you need to have the faith that. The practice of Ariyawasa, the practice of mindfulness, guarantees salvation from the woeful states and the other dangers of the realms of rebirth, samsara. Only with such faith, should we make ardent effort to build the noble abodes, Ariyawasa. Some people say that they cannot believe anything without their own experience. In some cases, faith follows fact, but in other cases, faith comes first and facts is found later by experience. For instance, in order to go to a, a new place, you never been there. So for the first time, you need to have faith in necessary information given by your close friends, trustworthy. Only with such factual faith, you will succeed to go there by train, by boat, or by flights as recommended. Without faith, you can be nowhere. So in many cases like this, the faith comes first and facts are found later. So only when you practice with faith, in advice given by someone trustworthy, you will succeed to dwell in the abodes of noble ones, which is characterized by realization of nirvana and liberation from all kinds of suffering. Otherwise, you have to live only in ordinary house, exposed to all kinds of danger throughout the cycles of births and death, sansara dukkha. A 
Again, on your arrival at your destination for the first time, you need to check whether you have come to the right place. When you find yourself to be in the right destination, then you can draw conclusion that your journey by train, by boat, or by flight is correct. Or the travel information or the advice you have received is correct. Then the faith becomes well established based on your own experience. In the same way, first you have to practice the mindfulness meditation by the faith in instruction given by a trustworthy teacher. But later you find yourself develop concentration and insight to a remarkable extent. Then there will arise some strong faith based on your own experience that the matter is true teaching, the authentic teaching of the Buddha. Father Moses' face will become unshakable when you gain a breakthrough in the Dharma that is Avicca Pasada. Just Santa, your faith getting strong. So mindfulness meditation is the time-tested method, which is the Buddha's authentic teaching, worth re recommending. Ehi pasika, come and see. In other words, for example, you would not recommend people to try poor food because they would blame you when they find it tasteless. On the other hand, if you recommend or if you feed them good food, they will surely thank you for, the, for that delicious food. In the same way, when people following your advice, develop mindfulness and find it beneficial, they will be much grateful to you. Indeed, the Buddha's teaching is time-tested and so, worth recommending, come and see, that means give it a try. This fact signifies one of the well-known attributes of the Dharma, ehi pasika, worthy of come and see. So it is important to have faith, to have a faith in the benefits of the mindfulness before you give it a try. Such faith is a prerequisite to build the noble abode, Ariyavasa, like the money necessary to build a secular house. It is also necessary to have strong will and aspiration to attain the Megapala and Nibbana in this very life. Equally important is tireless and relentless effort in the practice of meditation. These are kinds of entrance fee to the abode of noble ones, Ariyavasa. So if you have sufficient faith, will and energy, Sadda, Chanda and Virya, you can effort to build 
or to dwell in the abodes of noble ones. Endowed with such qualities as faith, will, and effort, you will become mindful of all the phenomena manifested at the six and those while you are engaged in daily activities like going, standing, eating, bending, stretching, and so on. So to be mindful means to build or to stay in the abode, noble abode. In other words, every moment of mindfulness means one step closer to liberation from the danger of woeful states. In due course of time, the development of mindfulness will lead to progressive stages of insight knowledge, culminating in the attainment of Nirvana. Thus, you will become one of the noble ones, Ariya, who possess the noble abode and reside there peacefully and gracefully. If you ask people which kinds of house you would like to live in, a beautiful mansion or a humble cottage, simple cottage, or in the open space as a homeless on the roadside, it is sure Nobody will say they want to be homeless. They would not even want to live in a simple cottage. Everyone would like to dwell in a beautiful mansion because they would feel safe and elegant there. In the same way, in the realms of samsara, you should think about what kinds of residence you want to dwell in. The noble, noble ones about Riyawasa or common people's ordinary house. You yourself have to answer this question. Nobody else can do on your behalf. But of course, our choice will be the abodes of noble ones. But I'm not very sure whether there is anyone who would like to live in the ordinary residence of common people. Of course, the abode of noble ones, Ariyawasa, is of high standard and well guarded. So our Lord Buddha gave the talk, Ariyawasa simply because he wants us to build that house. Among the requirements to build it, one gut, that is mindfulness. So when we practice mindfulness, we need to understand during the lifetime of the Buddha, there were people who could not attain the enlightenment, although they got chance to learn directly from the Lord Buddha. 
In this regard, there are two obstacles to one's potential attainment, even in the presence of the Buddha. Number one is Kiriya Barihani. That is, failure to do what one should do. Number two is Papa Mekdata. That is association with a bad companion. So during the time of the Buddha, Buddha was seated amid the congregation of Sangha when there came Kandaraka, a wandering ascetics, and Pesa, a lay follower. Then Kandaraka felt impressed by the Sangha, the monks, who was sitting quiet and calm without making any noise and motion. How well disciplined the monks are under the guidance of the great teacher. He wondered. And then he told the Buddha about that, whereupon the Buddha said that, what you said was true. Monks were well disciplined here. Some of them were arahants who developed mindfulness incomplete. Some Sangha were non returners They were Anagami who developed mindfulness in three quarters. Some Sangha were once Ritana Sakadagami who developed mindfulness in half. And some Sangha uh, were stream enterers, Sotabanas, who developed mindfulness in one quarter. And some Sangha were still ordinary Budujana, but on the same path as those noble ones. So in the Gandharaka Sutta, Michima Nikaya, the direct translation is like this. Buddha said to Gandharaka, Gandharaka, in this Sangha of Bhikkhus, there were Bhikkhus who were arahants with taints, destroyings, who have lived the holy life done what had to be done, lay down the burden, reach the true goal, destroy the fetters of beings, and who are completely liberated through final knowledge. And in this Sangha of Bhikkhus, there are Bhikkhus in higher training and done with constant virtue, constantly living a virtuous life, insightful, constantly living in living an insightful life. They abide with their minds, dwells established in the four foundations of mindfulness. What are the four? Buddha said here, Kandaraka, a big dress contemplating the body in the body, ardent, fully aware and mindful, overcoming desire and discontentment in the world. A bhikkhu dress contemplating the feeling in the feelings, ardent, clearly comprehending and mindful, overcoming desire and discontent, contentment in the world. 
A bhikkhu who starts contemplating the mind in the mind, ardent, clearly comprehending the mindful, overcoming desire and discontent in the world. A bhikkhu who starts contemplating the Dharma objects in Dharma objects, ardent, clearly comprehending the mindful, overcoming desire and discontent in the world. Buddha said to Kandaraka, When people develop mindfulness by doing no actions without mindfulness, they naturally become quiet and calm. They don't make any move without mindfulness. So their daily activities like bending, stretching, stretching their limbs, get slowed down in nature. That is why they become quiet, gentle, and calm. And when they are willing to speak, first they note. Willing to speak, willing to speak, first they note. Noting in this way, the willing itself may disappear if there's nothing important. So they only speak something necessary, but not anything unnecessary. In this way, they become quiet, gentle, and calm. Buddha said, So Buddha said that monks in his congregation were enlightened ones and at least meditators dedicated to mindfulness. Then the layman Pesa, the elephant driver's son, said, Venerabhasa, It is very good for you to teach people to be upright and honest. Animals are not deceptive or cunning. They are heartless. Animals are so open that without thinking twice, they urinate and defecate anywhere, anytime they want. They have no intention to cheat other masters. <coughs> if they are forced to do something against their will, they make a mess of it. Unlike animals, men are crafty and hippo critical. They do one thing in public, but another in private. They pretend to do something beneficial to others in their presence, but often do harmful in their absence. Bande, we cannot help admiring you for your wonderful teaching because you have reformed the minds of such cunning people. I do practice mindfulness meditation occasionally, although I'm a layman. Layman Besa, the elephant driver's son, said to Buddha, true mindfulness helps improve our moral characters Men not aware of their immoral thoughts are more likely to become dishonest and deceptive. The more mindful we are of our thoughts, the more honest we will become. So Chaitanya Upasana, contemplation of consciousness is important. 
Then Buddha was about to give a talk on the four types of personality, but unfortunately, Pesa took leave of the Buddha. He said that he had some business to attend to. Then Buddha let Pesa leave because it would not much benefit him to listen to the sermon half-heartedly. After the departure of Pesa, the Buddha told the monks that Pesa was an intelligent man and that he could attain the first stage of enlightenment, Sotapati Mega, if he listened to the sermon in full. In this connection, the commentary raises the question of whether a person with the potential for enlightenment could possibly fail to attain it even in the presence of the Buddha. And the commentary insists on the possibility and mentions two reasons why one can miss the chance for attainment. Kiriya Parihani and Papa Maitata, that is failure to do what one should do, association with bad companion, so be careful. We should not fail to do, fail to, we should not fail to practice meditation, what we should practice and we should associate with good companion who are very energetic to practice meditation. And the failure to do what one should do is related to two conditions. One is negligence on the part of the teacher, another is ne negligence on the part of the disciple. It is ne negligence of a teacher if he does not make his sermons comprehensive enough for his disciple to put it into practice until the attainment of Megapala, Enlightenment, and Nirvana. In some cases, people don't even have access to a qualified teacher, though they wish to practice. So they grow old and die without getting a chance to practice the Dharma, let alone to experience its taste. It is about the negligence on the teacher's part. So as a teacher, we should try our best to be dutiful by delivering comprehensive talks on how to practice. And it is negligence of a dis disciple if you fail to listen to the sermon in full or fail to put it into practice afterwards. Or even when you practice, you fail to continue until you accomplish it. So in the story, Pesa lost the great opportunity to be a string enterer, Sotapanna, even though he had potential, just because he failed to listen to the Buddha's sermons in full. That is why we would like to encourage you to listen the Dharma talk to the end and then practice until you accomplish.
Another obstacle to the enlightenment is Papa Mitata. That literally means association with an evil friend. If you think it sounds politically incorrect, you can tone it down to a bad friend. As an example of the consequences of association with a bad friend, the commentary mentioned the story of King Ajata Sattu. King Ajata Sattu actually had dharma potential to attain the first stage of enlightenment. Sotapati Mega, by listening to the Buddha summons called Samunyapala Sutta. But he could not make it because he had assassinated his father, King Bhimisara, who was Sotapana, by following the advice of monk Devadatta and evil friends whom he regarded as his teacher. So there are many other instances in which the association with bad people forms an obstacle to the enlightenment. Even in the time of the Buddha, some people did not get enlightened despite their spiritual potential because they followed false teachers. So this holds true also for many misguided people nowadays. So remember there are two obstacles to enlightenment, failure to do what one should do, association with a bad companion. So we should not fail to do, to practice what we should do. And we should associate with a true teacher, true Buddha, true Dhamma and true practice. So we will continue next week. We have to stop our discourse for today by practicing Satipatthana Vipassana meditation, by observing every phenomena occurring at the six and those, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. Sadhu. So